Welcome to video four of the video assembly guide for the Dragon Repeat. This video is going to take you through the assembly of the lower inner wings and the attachment of the nacelles. So this is the next step of the build. Uh, the installation of the uh, the wing stubs on both sides and the uh, installation of the nacelles onto the wings. Um, during that process we'll also be routing the electronics to the, uh, the various connection points um, and obviously this is one that I have prepared earlier um, but we shall be doing the work on one that I haven't prepared earlier and the one that we last saw um, being built with the tail being finished off. Um, so, to start off with, we need to put the, uh, the ribs in place to stabilise um, the, uh, the spars that we've got running out of the fuselage here um, and to shape our, uh, our Depron foam around. For the uh, for the wings themselves, our one millimeter foam. So let me put this aside, and we'll uh, go and get those parts. So the parts that we actually need to build up the internal um, part of the wing stubs are uh, D50, a pair of uh, D51, ditto D52, 53, and 54, all all pairs. And also we have a little bit of uh, plywood here um, that sits at the uh, the end of the wing stub. Um, that actually gets attached directly to our uh, D54s and uh, should just sit over them uh, like so. And, uh, and line up with the various cutouts um, and correspond um, it doesn't have one back here because this acts as a an end point um, for the uh, the thinner rear spar um, that uh, that joins the uh, the the rib at the end. So let's get those attached. Um, just wanted to show you something actually. Um, if you haven't seen this before, um, one of our customers put together a um, a three D file. Uh, for a nozzle that would increase the accuracy of the uh, the glue coming out of the uh, the foam to foam, also obviously reduces the amount that you need to use, or the, the the amount that comes out. So you're likely going to uh, save uh, on glue and obviously not put as much weight into the uh, to the aircraft either. Um, it's a great idea. We've modified it slightly. Um, we've actually put a thread on it too, so that you can actually uh, put the cap onto the. Uh, I'll show you. Put the cap onto the um, uh, the nozzle itself. But if I take the nozzle off, you'll see that it actually sits uh, directly over and covers the um, the original nozzle um, with its very wide spout and reduces that spout down to uh, a couple of millimeters. There we go. And uh, <laughs> there we go, as if by magic that one's blocked. So uh, you just use the standard procedure for uh, and declogging. And oh, that's just using a, a pin, or here I'm use, just using a bit of piano wire just to uh, to remove any dried up stuff. But obviously, putting the cap on really helps with uh, keeping the uh, uh, keeping the glue from drying out. Um, so. Um, the, this is the nozzle. This is a, a 3D printed part that we've done on our resin printer. Um, but uh, obviously we will have this available. At the time this video goes out, it, it may well already have been launched. So uh, you may already know about this, you may already have one. Anyway, let's get to it. I can just pop some glue. And as you can see, this is very flexible at the moment. It's only got a tiny bit of material in some places. Once the um, the plywood part is attached, 
it uh, obviously makes everything a lot more rigid. So let's pop that on there. Set the sums to uh, to dry off, and we'll do the same with the other side. Obviously, you want these parts mirrored, so uh, that's why I've laid them out like this, so I don't go and stick it to the to the same side. And also, obviously, you've got the part number on the uh, on the plywood as well. If you keep that on the outside on both parts, then because they've been cut in a handed way, um, you will get the correct outcome. So while that's drying off, pop that lid back on, there we go. While that's drying off, um, we can start popping these onto our uh, onto our airframe. So the, the first one, which is our D50, um, it can be a little bit fiddly to, uh, to pop it into place because we've got these wires here. Um, Let's start on this side. So as you can see with the rib itself, it's got a cutout that allows the passage of those wires through. Um, and it also needs to sit right up against the fuselage. You'll see that there are um, a, a couple of notches taken out of the spar right up against the, uh, the Tyvek there. So what we can do is just lift our uh, cables out of the way like so and then i'm just going to dry fit this first just to make sure everything is as it should be there we go and what you want to do is leave a gap between the bottom of the rib and the Tyvek that overlaps on the uh, bottom portion of the fuselage because that is going to take um, that's going to take the one mil of the skin of the uh, of the wing the wing stub so that's that's pretty much where we want it to sit so what I'm going to do now is just remove it delicately. There we go. And just pop a little bit of glue. Because it's going to go up against the Tyvek, I'm actually going to put some glue onto where it sits against the Tyvek on the fuselage. I'm not going to go mad. Just want to put it where it's going to come into contact. Oh, and also I want to put it into the notch. A little bit in the notch, there we go. Just for good measure. Okay. Those cables out the way again. Try not to pull them all the way through. <laughs> and put this into place. Not forgetting that one millimeter gap. One millimeter if. You know me, you'll know I like my ishes. <laughs> so, there we go. And that's in place. Okay, so we move to the next rib out, which is our D51. And that very simply slots 
into place. And you may think um, this material is quite uh, flexible, not particularly strong at all, but once it's all in place and once the, um, the skin is wrapped around, which is a, a you know it's a, a, sub a substantial um, skin, it's not like a tissue or anything like that, and um, that brings some rigidity to the uh, to the whole unit. So okay. So the contact points on this are, are just the slots. So I'm just going to put a little glue in the slots. And then pop them in place. Like so. On to the next. Into the slots. Top on. And slot it in. What you should notice is that the uh, the rear spar is pulling at an angle towards the uh, the main spar, and that's exactly what we want. So penultimate. As you can see, I'm making sure that the ribs are flush with the two spars where they sit. As now they're not protruding any, or the spars aren't protruding from them. So we're on to the final one with our plywood attached. That sits just uh, just like that. Let's just add a little bit of glue. You notice that, of course, we've got a gap in the end there, and that's that's where our little um, ply brace goes in, and we'll be doing that later um, as part of this build. But uh, in the meantime, when you um, come to attach this, you don't push the um, the slot all the way down, otherwise it would be look like uh, something like that. We don't want that, we want it uh, sitting so that that hole at the end in the ply allows us to push our um, brace into, uh, into the assembly. Also we don't want to cover the hole with glue because that would make it difficult to pop that brace in when it comes time. So we're just going to stick a little bit on the end and that. And that should hold it in place. There we go. So that's one side done, and uh, what I'll do is I'll crack on and finish the other side, and then we can start uh, thinking about preparing the skin to go on the uh, the outside of the wing. So now we have our uh, our ribs on. Um, the one thing that we can do before we start uh, preparing the skins is um, a little bit of uh, cable management. The motor connector. Uh, there's a little cut out in the uh, the spars 
either side uh, and if you just push the um, motor extension cable um, in and through that little uh, that uh, little cutout there on both sides um, then uh, that's, uh, that's halfway to uh, to getting that sorted so both my motor cables have ended up a little inside the fuselage so not a problem I can just grab them out now I could leave it till later but uh, now I've noticed them might as well do it before it gets any worse there we go so but, uh, yes those uh, those cables can uh, can sit under there uh, and what that means is that uh, when we come to put the skin on these actually protrude and uh, it enables us um, to plug in the uh, the, the motor um, without having to um, dig into the wing um, say if we had to replace a motor or something like that the connector is uh, very much available to us uh, to uh, to plug the uh, the, the motors in and out as uh, as we require. So that done, uh, onto the wing skin itself, um, and that is part uh, Z6 and Z7. Let's pop that up on my coffee cup, and let's grab our lower wing sheet. And so Z6, Z7 are these two parts here um, and let's just uh, free one of these up and then we can start the preparation for fitting okay so you notice on this part there are uh, various holes and bumps and ridges um, and obviously the uh, the print too so the lightened area here is uh, where the uh, nacelle uh, will eventually sit um, the, uh, the the holes here allow us to line the nacelle up neatly on the uh, on the wing itself um, there's a hole here for that uh, as I mentioned the motor extension cable to, uh, to go through um, and there are a couple of notches as well there are two notches there and there which show the, the that's the leading edge of the uh, the wing itself and this little notch here actually helps us line this whole part up um, when we come to install it on the uh, on the actual frame um, so I think the, probably the first thing to do is you will in your instructions have a, uh, a layout similar to this um, where you have all these red lines and that actually shows you the score lines that you have to put into the uh, the wing itself to allow you to uh, to bend and curve it over the um, uh, the frame so um, and it should be they're both rounded so you can actually pop them on like so and then the lines protrude out either side and uh, allow us to uh, to score the, uh, the the wing itself now um, I could try and hold that in place like so but I have got here um, some uh, this is actually the uh, model masking tape I'm going to use um, some bits of this uh, to actually hold the, uh, the part in place Let's line that all up. Put some tape down. And that should hold everything together. Now it's important you get these in the right place because lining it up with the um, uh, the, the next part of the wing um, is a lot easier um, if your scores are uh, all, all in the right place. So I've got it taped down 
just going to spin it round. Oh, look, I've taped it to the board. Uh, spin it round so that I've got it uh, here. Just final adjustments on the lineup. Yeah, this um, masking tape is, is rather good because it's fairly low tack. Um, so it doesn't take any of the Depron off and it's uh, easy to... Uh, it doesn't, doesn't rip up the paper either, which is great. So, everything lined up there. All I need now is my steel rule, my knife, and my willingness to run my knife along this depron without cutting it. So, using the back edge of the uh, the knife, and then carefully and purposefully put a, a crease in there. Move down. Same again. So I'm not doing it too aggressively, but enough so that it's going to make folding each crease very possible. Ideally what you want is that each crease is almost equal in indent. go so now if I lift all of this off I'll then be able to put a curve in that leading edge the uh, the tape I just got from um, the uh, the local hobby shop which is actually a, mainly a uh, train model train shop right next door to us. So now those uh, those creases are in. I should be able to fold each one of those in turn. I'm just uh, flipping it back and forth, just making sure that I am folding the creases rather than anything else. There we go. And so each crease should be nice and evenly bent so that you get this nice curve at the, at the, the front edge like so. Um, okay, while we're here, I've just noticed there's a little bit of a... A, um, a blip there where we cut it off the, uh, the sheet. Just put this to one side. So I'm just going to even that up. You can cut all sand if you want to be a little bit more careful. Um, you do both. There we go. And the other thing. Let's see. Really didn't do very well cutting this off out. <laughs> okay, just rushing it. Okay. So the other thing we want to do is this this folds over um, like so. 
um, it doesn't fold right to the uh, to the training edge. Um, so what we want to do is we want to put a chamfer here so that when it does come around to there, it's, uh, we don't have a uh, white edge at the back there. It uh, leads into the rest of the wing nice and flush. So we're literally going to put that to the edge of my board here. There's a bit of a lip here as it goes from one board to another. That's all I need. And then I'm just going to gently sand that down so that I get probably around about four or five millimeters in depth of angled depth rod. It also means that obviously you have a wider contact point um, sticking back down to the uh, to the wing, which helps. You can pick it up and check that you're getting that nice chamfer in place. You'll start noticing little bits coming off like this which shows you that the edge is, uh, is being met by your, uh, by your chamfer. So it's a good indicator that you're getting pretty close to what you want. There we go. So that didn't take too long, not too much dust, and that pops right over like that. Now, what we put in this portion here is actually a, a, we adhere a bit of uh, of Tyvek with uh, with some print on, and uh, I'll just get that part so that we can uh, put that in place uh, before we do anything else. So this part is uh, T forty one, and that actually sits just there so it it doesn't span the entire uh, width of the um, of this skin um, but it does sit flush with the inner join the inner inner part of the uh, the wing like that um, there's another part that overlaps that when the uh, when the other part of the wing goes on so uh, we fold that over and uh, you've got your your wing sorted. So let's just pop that onto the rear side of this wing skin. That's the uh, one tiny downside of this smaller nozzle is that uh, obviously the coverage isn't as quick when you've got the larger area to uh, to cover but it's still it doesn't take that long okay so let's just sit that there like so And then I'm just going to pop, push that down with the back of my knife just to make sure it sits nicely on that surface. And then you'll just let that dry off and then you'll start the uh, assembly process onto the, uh, onto the fuselage. So now that's nice and dry and adhered to the, uh, the underside of the wing, um, we can now think about installing the wing onto the fuselage. We do this in a couple of steps. Um, the first step is to actually adhere the, the bottom part of the, the wing to the fuselage. So we slot our edge into that little gap that uh, we created 
uh, when we put that first rib on. Um, if you find it difficult to get the, uh, the foam in, um, you can always just squish down that edge there. I found a really useful tool actually, um, which is, uh, this is like a sort of a stick with two ball bearings on the end. Um, and uh, I think it's used for sort of clay modeling and uh, that sort of thing, but um, it's very good for sort of just uh, manipulating the foam at, uh, at edges and things like that. Also, it can be used, I'll just pop that down over there for a sec, it can be used to actually thin Depron out uh, in areas where you want it to sort of bend and, uh, and curve. So you can actually use it in conjunction with the scoring um, to uh, to assist with uh, with that. So uh, well, there we go. I got that from our um, uh, local um, hobby craft, I think it was. Um, so uh, yeah, just a very uh, sort of a useful tool for pushing things in gently without uh, creasing or uh, causing any issues. So we've, uh, we've got our curve there, as I, as I was saying. Pop the um, the wing into that slot and then when lining it up what you're looking to do what we are going to do is just stick this in place um, obviously we've got some some cable routing to ensure happens um, we just need that so that the Material sitting against the fuselage and those little um, indents in the material are going to coincide with the leading edge of the of the wing. So you can see we've also got things like the uh, the slots for the nacelle sit within these two ribs here. They should be lining up too. Um, and obviously we have a bit of an overhang at the back here um, over the ribs where the this will fold over and stick to the, uh, um, the chamfered edge that we've created. So that's where we um, that's where we want it to sit like so. Um, so what I'm going to do is just apply a little glue, firstly just to this edge that's going in that slot, and we'll sit underneath that first rib that's uh, stuck to the edge of the fuselage. And then just going to add glue along the areas where the skin comes into contact. And this is where this nozzle come, comes into its own because it allows you to put quite a, a thin bead onto the, uh, the edge. Whereas previously it was uh, quite difficult to control how much came out of the nozzle. This way we can uh, make sure we don't use an excess of glue or get ourselves into a bit of a mess. So, there we go. Right. Put that in place while we still got time to slip it around. Our cables are out of the way of anything sticky. That is being a problem. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's just make sure. Put that forward a little bit more. Looking on the other side. Once again, let's uh, use our 
little uh, influencer, let's say. Just making sure everything lines up allows for um, for cables and the um, foam bits coming up from the nacelles. Make sure that we've uh, squared up the wing at the end as well. Uh, it doesn't matter if these are a bit wavy; uh, they they sit inside and. And obviously just keep the two pieces of foam apart uh, to create the, um, the the wing shape. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we can just let that um, now uh, dry, the glue dry there. And then once we're happy that, uh, that it is dry, we can do the final process of folding that over. Um, what I'm going to do now is prepare the other side whilst that's drying um, and uh, we'll come back and uh, and finish off those winglets. Okay so I have prepared the uh, second side of the or the other side of the wing uh, which I'm going to install in a minute but just to let you know that this part is uh, Z7, I think, and the Tyvek that I put on there, T42. Um, so I'm going to uh, install this in exactly the same way uh, as the uh, as the other side there, and then I'll come back and we'll fold them over. Right, so we've got uh, both wings attached to the, uh, the, the bottom, the, the skins. Um, before we go to fold everything over, I just want to make sure that the uh, cables are in place. Um, so the uh, the servo extension cables, or the, the, the Y cable, um, we want the ends just um, coming out of the, uh, the holes in the end of the wings. Um, what I'm going to do, just apply a little bit of uh, glue, just to tack them in place. Don't really want it to be particularly permanent, but uh, just apply a little glue into the, uh, the spaces provided for the the extension cables, and just going to put a little bit of glue onto the uh, the cable as well. Um, and we'll pop that into place once the uh, the glue has dried. There we go, and also we want the motor extension cables uh, appearing through these holes that have been provided in the uh, the leading edge too so um, we can we've got enough um, cable I think we have we can just pop those through now in preparation for folding the wing over there we go let's do that one there too So, we'll put a bit of tack and we'll just make sure that the, the cable falls inside the uh, little root that we've got for it through the wing. There we go. So, the process now is to simply fold these wings over and just make sure that they curve so that they are following the shape of the um, the ribs inside 
and you can dry run this so you can check out what's going on. I'm basically pulling that material and you should. I'm not always going to get the graphic lining up here, but um, I will make some adjustments based on this build um, to, uh, to try and bring things in line a little bit more. So, just check out, just make sure everything. You can also see on the edge here, just to see that how that follows the contour of the of the rib there as it curves over. That's what we're aiming for. So to finalise that part of the uh, the build, we just need to add some glue to the various areas on the tops of the ribs for example actually what we'll do first is we'll do this trailing edge where we've chamfered that uh, surface area for ourselves just add some glue along there over on our outer rib and then you can just add a bit to each of the ribs and way into the fuselage and then finally along that inner rib like so I'm just going to put some of the tips of the rib as well where they leading edge will form there we go and what I'm going to do is just fold over while that is still partially wet adhesive just fold that over so that we get adhesive on to the other side of the wing as well Actually, that join at the bottom there, and then just let it fall apart again. And then, going to look at where that glue is on that trailing edge, and just add a little more to help with the uh, adhesion. where the areas are that it needs to properly stick down and then I'm just going to leave that to uh, to dry out almost completely and we'll then use the, uh, the the properties the ground properties of the adhesive when it's dry on both surfaces to very quickly bring the uh, the whole thing together and we shouldn't need to tape it or hold it or clamp it or anything like that it should just uh, form up for us right I think it's sufficiently dry we can uh, actually do the deed and fold our wing over just doing it very carefully so that it's following that curve Just bringing that final edge together. And you'll notice there's a little sort of swoop there where the back edge of the 
uh, with the trailing edge of the wing just sits on that little Tyvek lip there. That's by design. go. So everything's in place, the cables are routed, and uh, that's all looking very good. Excellent. Right. I shall complete the next side, and then we can turn our attentions to attaching the nacelles. So we have the wing stubs on now, and uh, I found another use for my little uh, ball tool, um, which was to just press these uh, contact edges together, like so. Just applies pressure in a nice sort of gentle way, but it's uh, obviously fairly pinpoint. The other thing is, with this ball, is that it works very much like the, the pen. If you do get a little bit of glue that uh, seeps out, it picks it up, balls it up, and uh, you can uh, take it off the, the surface really easily. So if you can, go and get one of those or something similar. So we now have our wing stubs on. We can bring our the cells in back into the picture and we can look at dry fitting them um, so when you're assembling them there's a little gap in the bulkhead just here and that's what the, uh, the little connector for the motor um, pokes through um, so when you're installing it you just need to make sure that um, you're able to pop that in position and obviously you've got two slots here um, that um, these two pieces jutting up slot into um, and that should provide good position for the uh, for the nacelle so it should just sort of sit into place like so and there's uh, there's very little sort of wiggle room it should sort of just settle um, onto the wing and the uh, angle of the top of the nacelle should nestle into the uh, shape of the wing underneath like so and then you've got these little sort of flap out things at the side um, that uh, cover all the sins and can also be used obviously to um, adhere the nacelle to the wing itself so right, I don't want to pull that out entirely because it will pull my extension all the way through I don't want that so so that's how we do it it's, it's pretty straightforward so um, let's just I'll bring my filthy coffee cup, coffee cup in. Pop that upside down, like so. And it doesn't matter which nacelle goes where you can. Uh, they're they're uh, both exactly the same. They're not handed at this stage. The only way that they're handed is by the type of motor that we put in, and the way we get that motor to rotate. Uh, so. Anyway, there we go. So I'll take one to sell. And I'm going to apply glue to these flanges, I want to call them. That it's going to sit up against the skin, like so. I'm also going to put a little bit on just a few dots 
on the areas that are going to come into contact with the underside of the wing as well, like so. And then I'm going to pop it on. So just make sure that connector goes through the slot. Yep, through the slot, and then those two projections go through into their respective slots, and then the the cell could just nestle down onto the wing, press it firmly down so that those uh, tabs go into that slot and then it might require some holding in place or what you could do is just pull it marginally free for now let the glue go off and then just use the contact adhesive quality to uh, to bring it all back together so that's what we're going to do i'll just let that uh, rest for now See, it's heavier on one side and uh, and then I'll once that's dry I'll come back and we'll finish that off right let's finish this off so all we do is squeeze it onto the wing and hey presto it's there so it's been designed so that uh, it should be at the uh, correct angle for flight. Um, so just make sure you've got it all pressed down as it should be. And it should then be, as you can see, I can hold the whole of the aircraft on that nacelle, which is good. So let me do the second one, which is exactly the same method oh i've just noticed my little connector has not gone all the way through so let's just make sure poking through there ready to connect the motor to um, so yes as I was saying let's get the second nacelle on and uh, that should have us uh, complete this section and uh, we can crack on with uh, other bits so let me just uh, glue all of this up uh, get it installed and we'll uh, I'll come back for a final chat on the uh, on the installation so now we have two nacelles firmly attached to the aircraft um, another use for this uh, little tool uh, the smaller ball bearing this time just to uh, run down these flanges and gently press them into the uh, the wing. Nice little finishing touch. So uh, both nacelles are um, sitting at the same angle, which is exactly what we want. That's how it should build. Um, but it's always worth checking as we do these things. Um, and uh, so we have reached the stage that I wanted to with um, with the, the showing you how to assemble uh, this particular aircraft. Um, we've got, as I said, we've got our um, our cables routed, um, our uh, positions correct for motor uh, plugs and the aileron servo plugs as well and the uh, nacelles are firmly attached 
Um, so the next stage that we're going to go on to is uh, we're actually going to create the uh, canopy, um, or the, the hatch, I should say, and also the uh, nose piece for the fuselage itself. Um, I'm refraining from putting the, uh, the wings on until we've got the whole of the fuselage created um, because obviously once we've got the wings on the uh, the whole aircraft becomes a lot more cumbersome to, uh, to handle and prone to damage so we'll finish off the fuselage first then we will um, uh, create the hatches and finish off the um, uh, the nacelles uh, put the, uh, the the vac form parts on and, and paint those up and then we'll come to attaching the uh, the wings and uh, actually before we do the wings we'll put the struts on as well there are a couple of struts that sit between the fuselage and the nacelle and also on the underside we have uh, a strut um, that uh, goes from the bottom of the fuselage to the uh, the side of each of the nacelles uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll crack on with that next um, but for now, um, we have reached uh, reached the stage um, that uh, that I'm happy with, and we can continue forward from. Mm -hmm.